uh, Psalms chapter 91. Chapter 91. Um, Amelia has actually taught this in Sunday school, and my wife has actually taught this in Sunday school. And uh, they did a fantastic job with it, and I just felt led to do it myself. And I, of course, not everybody is here for Sunday school. This is such a powerful, powerful chapter in the book of Psalms. Amen. And uh, of course, uh, you know, all of God's Word is awesome to me. I mean, it's just the most awesome love letter that you could ever receive today is the Word of God. I do want to say again, Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And uh, that was an awesome song she just played, that God never gave up on me. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Um, and of course, as much as me and my wife get around, she's... Uh, she never gave up on me neither. God gave her the strength for that. I wouldn't be standing up here today, so I just wanted to let her know how much I love her. Um, again, happy Mother's Day. I will take a side trip maybe to, if I get that far, Revelations chapter 12, if you want to mark that as well. Um, to give you a little background on Psalms 91, this, is actually, this was actually written to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And it is also written to those that are His. So my question to you today, is He yours? And I know He is because you wouldn't be sitting here today if He wasn't. Amen. So this is written to Jesus Christ. It is written to us that love the Lord today. Um, and it will be even God speaking about the Messiah and about His, uh, His children. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the Sabbath, which the Sabbath in 1 Corinthians 5, 7 um, it, it says that Jesus Christ, when He was crucified and sacrificed on that cross, He became, hey guys, He became our Sabbath, which means He became our rest. So what is Passover? Passover is the high Sabbath. And He is our rest. He is our refuge, okay? Yes. Um, man, I, I don't see how people make it a day in this life without having something to get up and look forward to. Amen. Without getting up and feeling the comfort of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit within our souls, yes. I don't say how they do it because I know I couldn't. I could not do it. Um, a lot of people ask me all the time, "Well, how do you know there's a God?" I'm standing here. Amen. You can po not possibly know and understand that there is a God unless you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can't explain that. You can't explain that to somebody. I mean, I look at so many different miracles out there today. How could you not say that there's not a God? That precious baby over there, that's one of the most amazing, fascinating things to me that God did was that a woman can grow a human child in her womb. I mean, that can only be of God. Uh, there, I mean, you can look at all the things that He's done in this world. Look at the, the body of water in the oceans in Florida in places like that. Only God could have done that. Uh, so it just amazes me. And I, you know, we've got to pray for those people who do not believe in God. We've got to pray for them that they would that, that they would open their eyes that somebody, one of us, one of God's children will go out and witness to them and share the grace of Jesus Christ with them. Amen. And, and, that, and that's how it's going to happen. We've got to get out there and we've got to tell people about God. Uh, but this is this has got some really beautiful scripture in it, um, and of course I may go to a couple different other places. Psalms 91, written to the Messiah and those that are His. Uh, chapter 91, verse one: He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, Amen. the Almighty God, folks. And you know what? It is no secret to us that love the Lord. It's no secret to us that the Holy Spirit exists. It's no secret to us that Jesus Christ died and rose again. It is no secret to us that we have the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within us. And we've got His protection. As long as we stay in His shadow, we've got His protection each and every day that we wake up and go out into the world. Can I get an amen? Amen. <clears throat> To abide also means to lodge. You don't have to die a physical death today to abide in the refuge of the Lord, folks. He's there for you now. Amen. He's here for you today. 
There's not one thing that you are going through today that God cannot help you to overcome in your life. To have that refuge. I always like to say, I want you to look back on your life. Now, I've, let me tell you something. I've lived a colorful life. I've done a lot of things. I want you to look back in your life and, and, and realize and see the refuge, the hand of God guiding you through your life and the things that He has brought you through. Because I'm going to tell you something. By all rights, I should be dead and not standing up here today. God had a purpose for my life before I knew I had a purpose oh, in my life. Yes. Praise God! Those of us that love Him, but we have got to show others. <laughs> so when I'm studying this, I, I can't imagine people going through their life not having something to look forward to. How do you live your life and think that when you die there is nothing else? How sad is that? Uh, Luke 14, 23, The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Yes. Now I know it's up to God who's in here and who's not in here, man, but one day this church will be so full the walls will not be able to hold it. Amen. It will be. I claim it. I know it. I feel it. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Now if you're not going to believe in God and you're going to say there's not a God and some uh, uh, bad thing happens in your life and you cry out to Him, Oh, Father, please help me. It doesn't mean He's going to be there for them. But when you seek Him, Every day. Through His Word. Through prayer. Going to church. Do you know you made God's day today because you cut out an hour of your time out of your busy life to plant, to come through those doors and to worship Him? You think, well, that's not that big of a deal. It is today. It is today. As they continually kick our God out of this great nation that He blessed us with. Oh, man. So it is a big deal. It is a big deal to have a place to come to worship. It is a big deal to come into a house of God and actually be taught the Word of God. Amen. It's a very big deal. <clears throat> we have to have faith. Let me finish that verse. It says, I will say unto the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. What is that trust? It is to have faith in God. Our word for the year. Come on. To have faith that God is there with you no matter what you're going through. To have faith that God is going to pick you up when you have fallen down. Verse 3. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now what is the snare of a fowler? It's someone who, who sets traps to catch the birds. So who is the fowler today? It's Satan. And he's always setting traps for us to snare us in his snare. Is that trap an addiction to drugs? Is that trap an addiction to alcohol? Is that trap an addiction to pornography? Is that trap of the lust of the flesh and adultery? Yes, Whatever your weakness is, the fowler knows it, and he has got a trap set waiting for you to mess up. Right. But we have the refuge. As long as we are in the shadow of the Almighty God, those traps won't do him no good because we have the victory. Hallelujah. Don't let him snare you in his trap. He has many traps. And I, and I got to say this because this is one of the biggest traps that he's got set today for God's children. And that is for those that believe in the rapture theory. Folks, he will deceive millions and millions of God's children with that trap. And it's a very, very sad thing. Verse 4. I love this verse. 
He shall cover thee with His feathers. Can you feel the embrace of the Holy Spirit today? Hallelujah. Can you yes. feel it? Can Amen. you feel His presence? <laughs> he shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. You will have faith in Him. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. What is the shield and the buckler? It is the Holy Word of God, folks. Ephesians 6.20 says, Take on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand each and every time that you are in God's Word and each and every time that you are in prayer. You've got that shield in front of you. You're not going to fall into the snare. You've got the helmet of salvation. You've got the breastplate. Satan cannot touch you if you have the protection of Almighty God. Amen. A verse I really like about this one is if you go back to Deuteronomy 32, 11, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, and our Father is compared to the great eagle, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, and taketh them, beareth them on her wings. I mean, you go to hanking around with an eagle's nest and, 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 his, and her babies, you're asking for trouble. Because if you are one of His, and I say yes, that you we're all His, but to be one of His, to abide in the mansion that He is preparing for you today, those who love Him, those who have accepted Him as their Lord and Savior today, you've got the wings of God. You've got His protection about you. And if anybody hangs with His children, He does not like it. Went to Pickwick a couple of days ago and I've been noticing this nest for the last couple of years. My wife knows what I'm talking about. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Before you go over that bridge mm -hmm. and you see all the, the power transformers and all those things and you look up, up to the right, there is a huge, huge eagle's nest there. And I've watched it. And I've watched her have her babies and seen them hatch and see how they hover above that nest. God is hovering above you today. And when His enemies mess with you, He will thump their gourd. Man, I love that analogy. Our Father compared to the great bald eagle that protecteth His young. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, praise and glory to God. Verse 5, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. There is no reason for us to fear Satan. There is no reason for us to fear the things and the ways of the world that they continue to throw at us, folks. We have no reason to fear because Jesus Christ told us in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, He gave us power over our enemies. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for the destruction that wasteth at noontime. Look at the world today, folks. We are living in modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. The things that are taking place. Socialism and communism are knocking at our door today. The one world system. Do you know what that is? That is the political system talked about in Revelation chapter 13. Amen. One world political system, which is one world currency, one world religion, one world government, and our God, the eagle, is not going to have it. They can continue to kick God out of our schools. They can continue to kick Him out of our courthouses. And they're even kicking Him out of God's house. That's sure enough. You're saying, what do you mean, brother? Because they're not teaching the Word of God. They're teaching traditions of men and false doctrines, false religion. They are telling God's children that there is another way to salvation other than what is written in this book. Oh, they can continue to kick God out and ignore His laws and His commandments all day long, but we are going to be right here and we're going to be praising and worshiping God and we're going to be living in His Word and His commandments and His laws. Amen, amen. amen. Yes. <clears throat> Since we brought that eagle up, I'm going to make a side trip here to Revelation chapter 4. 
You can stay there where you're at, and I'll come right back to it. Revelation 12, 14. Verse 14, And to the woman, the woman, folks, is Israel. It is the 12 tribes. It is God's children. And it doesn't matter whether you are one of those tribes or whether you are Gentile or whether you are white, black, yellow, or green. It doesn't matter because when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we are all God's children. Amen. <clears throat> God has prepared a place for all of His children. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. The wilderness is the world. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Gee, him coming to earth, claiming to be Jesus Christ. What did it say? It said the eagle will fly her into a place and continue to nourish her. He will continue to nourish us through the Holy Word of God while all of this is taking place. Amen. And if anybody hankies with any of his children, he is hovering above us. He has got you covered. You will be fed and you will be taken care of. And the serpent cast out, his, out of his mouth a water, a flood after the woman, and she might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What is the flood? It is the flood of lies and deceit and darkness that is on this world today, folks. Remember what happened on Noah's flood? I mean, oh, Enoch preached and preached and preached. I don't know how many years before that happened. Only eight were listening that ended up on that ark. So my, my question to you is, are you going to be on the ark of the end times? I got news for you. Our feet ain't going to get wet. Because we've got that great eagle. Our Father watching over us and protecting us and nourishing us. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Oh, Mother Earth that lives and breathes that will provide for us during that time. Alright, going back to Psalms. Verse 7. And a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Those that fall are those that fall into the fowler's trap, folks. Those that fall are the ones that think they're going to be flown out of here before Satan comes to this earth, thinking that he is Jesus Christ. And there's a lot more than 10,000. Because if you read Revelations 13, 8, it is the entire world that will follow after Him. The whole world. And we've got a handful right here at Old Union Community Church that know God's Word and the truth. Isn't that miraculous? Amen. What a blessing! Amen. Thank God. Revelations chapter 20, verse 7 and 8 says those that even after they see Satan thrown into the pit still claiming to be Jesus Christ, when He comes back out for that short season, the number of God's children that will follow Him are going to be numerous as the sands of the sea. Man, that's a lot of people. We have got to stop being complacent and get our tail ends out into the world today and be a witness for Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. If they don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they don't have a chance at all. It's our job to get out and spread the gospel of the living God. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now there was a time I thought that I would enjoy seeing that. But boy, when I started studying this, I thought, man, I, just, I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. That's right. But God's election will actually see those that get it wrong cast into the lake of fire. And how can we not be 
how can we say we're Christians if that would not to bother us? It does. We've got so many people that are lost out there today. And you can ask my wife, I used to be one of those just get be so quick to get mad at people, you know, you big dummy. How come you don't how come you don't understand this stuff? I don't understand it, you know, but we've got to pray for them. We've got to have compassion of them. And that is the mark of God's election is those that have compassion on their brothers and sisters that are lost today. But in Psalms 37 34, it says, You will see the wicked cast into the lake of fire. You know, I get a lot of people that come online and they say, Brother, how come the wicked are getting ahead? How come this guy over here, I know he does drugs, and he's, dri he's driving this fancy car and got this big fancy house and all these things. What did I just say? God said that you're going to see them cast into the lake of fire. Well, well. Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as you have. Be content with where you are in your life today. Be content with what you drive. Be content to where you live. And you take care of what God has blessed you with. And He will bless you with more. Don't be coveting what the evil and the wicked are getting away with today because their reward is the lake of fire. That's right. Man, I will take a cardboard box over being cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Come on now. Yes. Mm -mm. Verse 9, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge. Is the storm beaten upon your house today? Is it lightning, thunder, high winds? I'm talking about your physical self. I'm talking about life. And the things that this world and the foul are throwing us each and every day. Is it beating on your windows? Is it hailing? God is your refuge. Man, if people would just stop, get quiet, and pray to God in the storm. Sometimes the storm's so bad you can't lift your head up. Guess what? Pray! While you've got your head bowed, while you are on your knees, you pray! Praise the See, that's where Satan makes his mistake. He thinks he's got you on your knees, but what he don't know is that you're praying to God. You're praying to the refuse. You're praying to the great evil. Yes. Hallelujah. We're not giving up. We don't give up. Right. He's going to make a mistake, and we're going to win because we've got the victory, and this book says we do. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall there any plague come nigh unto thy dwelling. Now these next several verses are going to tell you exactly how Satan operates. These two verses I've known for many years. I've always, I've always just loved these two verses. The point that God wants you to understand about these two verses is how Satan operates. So, verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. What is a way? It's the path that you're on. If you're one of his and you love him today and you take time out of your life today to serve and love him and let him know it and get up each and every day and try to do what is right in a world that's going so wrong. He will give angels charge over you to watch over you to keep you on the path that God has placed you on. Come on. Now the mode of operation for Satan is this. In Matthew chapter 4, he, go, he takes Christ or God takes Christ in the Spirit up to the mountains and lets Satan tempt him. So he quotes this Scripture. But the one that I just quoted to you, he didn't even mention See, Satan knows the Word of God. Amen. My question is to you, how familiar are you with the Word Come of God? On. Come on. I'm going to wrap it up with this verse right here. Verse 12. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. He took Christ to the pinnacle, which in our terminology today is about four stories high. And they told him to jump off. He told him to jump off. He said, wait, the Word says that they shall bear thee up at any time. Is that what the Scripture just said? He says, no. It says, he bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. 
Satan will use God's Word against you if you do not know it. You know, the other point I want to make is so many people think they're not going to be here for the Great Tribulation, yet God let His only begotten Son be taken to the mountain to be tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. We have Old Testament prophets that died to bring forth the Word of God. We have apostles and disciples that were crucified for bringing forth the Word of God. So what, why do people think that they are so special in their little old flesh bodies today that they would escape temptation and trials and tribulations? You're not going to. But this right here, and the eagle is our refuge. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. Whatever one please.